Thank you for joining me here on the last segment of today's show. And we're going to bring up a topic that not a lot of coaches, not a lot of teams want to be on the receiving end of. But we have to talk about it, I believe, because we're six weeks through the NFL season. And I believe that it's fair now to point out some of the teams, some of the environments that are heading towards a change that aren't really sitting too well with me based on the performances and what we're hearing from the, those teams and the, the reports around those teams. And I just feel like we got a good sample size now that we could kind of evaluate which ones are heading towards a drastic change or a, a, uh, a more drawn out change towards the end of the season, potentially based on how everything plays out. And we're looking at the top uh, and we're looking at some of the top places with head coaches on the hot seats and looking at it at sort of a a three-piece scale, if you will. You know, in terms of the hot seat, which coaches are on the warm seat, I guess you could say, the hot seat and the, the scolding seat right now after six weeks in the NFL. I have a list here of about uh, five coaches that I think are the closest to potentially being sacked in uh in soccer terms if you will so um I, I thought i'd bring it up because some of these situations i think are going um are heading in a bad direction where you you can't really ignore them up until this point so starting off with the first one um on the warm seat i have antonio pierce as one of the the main candidates i guess you could say to to potentially be let go of or for the the raiders to seek a change at some point this year because of the fact that the Raiders are um, are 2-4 and four right now. It, it hasn't been like awful, awful, but in the, in the same breath, you know, the situation overall with the Raiders hasn't really improved too, too much. Um, the, the indecisiveness with the quarterbacks, right? Is it Gardner? Is it Aiden O'Connell? How long is it going to be Aiden O'Connell? Um, also, the fact that they missed out on drafting one of the six that went right before their pick in the NFL draft, so that really didn't help anybody too much. And uh, also, um, the the inconsistency, not just at quarterback, but overall on this team where they beat the Ravens, but they get blown out by the Broncos. Now, they don't look too much better against the uh, the Steelers. They, they have a decent win against the Browns. So we have a couple good ones and some more bad ones. You don't really know how to judge this team too much, and you don't really know what team is going to show up on Sundays especially and with the fact that they just traded Devontae Adams how does that affect their their overall you know confidence that the fans that this organization has on this group of players that they're really able to do something this year and you know the story of Antonio Pierce I don't want to see him leave but I feel like it's almost inevitable to a point where um, you came in last year you really galvanized the troops to uh, really um, really turn this thing around after the the whole Josh McDaniel situation and how awful that ended for him to come in and really turn things around like he did was was great to see it was a great story last year but now this year and how things haven't really changed too much that's why I really didn't put him on the the scolding seat per se because um, it's not imminent by any means but he could be looked upon as a guy that the the Raiders, if this thing doesn't really get any better, how they'll really try to go through a clean slate of everything and reset everything completely now, knowing that Devontae's gone. Maybe they entertain a, tr a trade for, uh, for Max Crosby if they really want to blow this thing up. But Antonio Pierce could be at the, the feet of that if they decide to, to really change everything completely. So I had him on the warm seat. Um, I had him on the warm seat right now. For uh, not too bad, not the hot seat, but just you know, consider it. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me, so to say. the The next coach I wanted to mention is Doug Peterson, and he is the only coach I have on the the scolding seat. The, he's the one that I feel like is the closest to being um, b potentially fired uh, in in layman's terms. Right, the Jaguars are one in five now. After another display just being dominated by the uh, the Chicago Bears, they didn't play great against the Buffalo Bills. They were fortunate to come away with a win against the Colts, and it, it just really hasn't looked convincing at all this year, especially with big expectations, right? With uh, Trevor Lawrence being signed to the most money by a quarterback before Dak Prescott, obviously. And um, 
the the pressure that their owner uh, Shad Khan um, was putting on this team as well, and how he was saying that this was one of the best Jaguars teams that uh, was present in recent memory, and how they wanted to really erase and not have the the ending of twenty twenty three be a narrative that continues on with this team going forward and they've only really gotten worse or just continued that trend because they collapsed last year losing the majority of their their second half games and now they've lost the majority of their first half games so far through 2024 so unfortunately you know they're not going to get rid of Trevor Lawrence right because they just signed him to that massive contract so with Doug Peterson being there and with how bad it's going so far and you're you're hearing talks about after the game against the uh, the the Bears, how Andrew Cisco, their safety, was saying how there's a lot of quit in this team, and how Doug Peterson himself said that they need to to change the culture. Um, at this point, is is kind of crazy to think about where um, you're talking about changing the culture, and the culture is one of the things that is most solidified in some of the better teams. So if you're talking about that, then uh, I don't think we're having the same discussion as we would with a contending team compared to the Jaguars. So um, if the losing continues heading towards the trade deadline, it it wouldn't surprise me if they just packed everything up and decided that, you know, it's not the year for it. Uh, Doug Peterson really isn't getting the best out of Trevor Lawrence and developing the way that we thought he would. So it wouldn't surprise me that he's the next coach gone after uh, Robert Sala was obviously fired. So... He is on the scalding seat for me at this point of the year. Also, the the next coach that I wanted to mention here also is Nick Sirianni. And there's not a lot of coaches that, um, after a win, you would say are on the hot seat. But I think Nick Sirianni has been here for a while, even if not a lot of people wanted to uh, wanted to bring it up. I think certainly this is a, a situation where, like we finished just saying, that Nick Sirianni just really hasn't, Apart from that Super Bowl year, and I don't want to downplay like like everybody just gets for there, but you know the the drop off has really been so confusing and really just been unacceptable with how much talent that they have, how slow they start games now. And I know he doesn't really have direct responsibilities anymore, but that goes along with it, right? If your head coach really isn't involved in anything, then what is he really doing? You might say, oh, he's motivating or he's leading, but after the displays he shows with talking trash and talking back to um, his own fans and doing the stuff that he has done in, in the past before. Um, is that the guy that you want to kind of show face for your organization and be a, a representative for this team? I think that and the fact that if uh, if the Eagles continue to put on these, these bad displays where they're okay some games, they get by, but they lose some other games and they just kind of float around 500, it's not a situation where... Nick Sirianni is just guaranteed to come back. I think at that point, with how much, you know, talent that they have and how much better seemingly they got on defense, right, with, with these additions and things like that, um, it's uh, it would be really disappointing if after acquiring Saquon and having this juggernaut team, it, um, it just ends in a 500 season where they get bounced out again in the first round of the playoffs. So I feel like Nick Sirianni because there's no really other option to go to, is probably on the hot seat if uh, things don't turn around for the Eagles. And um, Terrell, Terrell T, welcome to the show, Cam to the Vikings. I saw that before. Um, Cam Akers, obviously going back to the Vikings. Pretty surprising. There's been a lot of trades today. Um, And that one's just the latest one. So that one is one that I wasn't expecting, but it did happen as well today. And... Just rounding off some of the the guys here as well. The last two, I have Mike McCarthy for the Dallas Cowboys being on the hot seat for me. And it just felt like he's like overdued his stay there as the Dallas Cowboys head coach. Again, I don't know why the, the Cowboys sort of thought that it was a great idea to bring him back after the year that they had last year, disappointing once again in the first round of the playoffs to bring him back and think that things were going to drastically change with the same group of guys, if not worse, with uh, the same head coach. I don't know where they would have thought that this was going to be drastically different, but I guess you you get the same results by putting in the same amount of effort in trying to improve this team. 
you put in the same amount of effort that you did last year or not at all this offseason to try and improve this team, you're going to get results like this. The same sort of lackluster, disappointing you know, Cowboys team that you think should play better, but they're missing a lot of key pieces. And uh, if you like Mike McCarthy will be the next one to go, that's why I have him on the hot seat, not the warm seat, because um, he would be the next one to go. They're not going to get rid of, obviously, their general manager or anything like that. They're not going to get rid of their quarterback, their wide receiver they just signed. They just brought in, uh, or no, they didn't just bring in their coordinators, but um, that whole coaching staff could go after this year. I feel like they are going to be the next ones to go. That's why I have him on the hot seat based on how the Cowboys are pretty much stuck in the same place they were last year, if not worse. So Mike McCarthy is there as well. And lastly, um, the Panthers, Dave Canales. This one is a little bit more self-explanatory just because the, the Panthers don't look any better. Maybe you think that Dave Canales, this position for him, he was a little bit in over his head because of how young he was. This is his first head coaching job after having a good season as the, the coordinator for the um for the for the Buccaneers and helping develop Baker Mayfield. It hasn't really developed like that for uh for Bryce Young. Obviously they benched him and you know, it hasn't gone gone any better, right, since then with Andy Dalton. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if the Panthers kind of reset everything again and find a new head coach, find new coordinators, try to find um, other pieces that just add to this team. That's sort of their their M.O., trying to reset everything and get uh, the new guys in and try to, you know, get quicker results. And I don't necessarily agree with it. Um, I think they need a bit more continuity at this point. But um, with how bad they're performing, it wouldn't surprise me that he is let go of and the Panthers reset this entire thing. So... Those are my top five candidates of the, the coaches who are facing the most heat, who have potentially the greatest chances of being let go of this season if things don't start to turn around. We're already through the first six weeks of the NFL so far, and the next couple, or the next few I should say, um, are going to be that much more important for securing jobs, for securing, securing seating in the NFL overall in the playoffs as well. It's only going to get tougher. It's only going to get more exciting as well. So we have that to look forward to. But for right now, that'll do it for this episode of the Chip Shot Football Podcast brought to you guys by the GSMC Sports Network. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I want to remind you guys to like, follow, and subscribe to the show as well as following the network on all forms of social media. And if you want to see more of this show, check out both YouTube channels, the GSMC podcast network channel the gsmc sports network channel to see more content around the nfl more of the live shows and more content around this league in a variety of different ways and lastly tune in every weekday at 6 30 p.m for more of these live shows with me manny maradiega as your host covering more of the nfl as we go on through the season join me tomorrow at the same time to continue to talk about the nfl and more storylines that continue to happen as we go through the rest of the week. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go.